still no real rhyme or rhythm as to which one starts. No, we'll have to see how it does work out as EDG are going to start things off on the blue side here for this game. Hecarim's the first band there. It's a smart one. Callista joins soon after as well. We actually do have a LeBlanc there, banned for King. Almost always banned against Pawn. And he eats another ban as well with Azir. Blue side Hecarim banned, so amazing. Jay not going to be picking up his most known champion. I think he actually ended up playing more Nar than Hecarim by the end of the split, but definitely was a pioneer on that Hecarim top. Was indeed an amazing Jay. Pioneered quite a few things in the top side. Was one of the best uh, looking players of his old team, Energy Pacemaker, of course, who no longer playing in the LPL this particular season. And we got the last band through here for EDG. We've always seen strong picks and bands from this side. And with a new lineup here, especially at least for game number one, be curious to see what else they can mix into the roster as Vladimir is actually the final band. Feels like King are almost priced into three mid lane bands. Cassiopeia makes it through picks and bands. Not even the skill matchup of Azir available. You have to say the Rex side looks pretty tasty though, so might have to be the first pick, but not many answers to Cassiopeia. As Amazing J, another one of our analysts spawned smiling somewhere. But Rexai, you think you have to pick it up as the first player. I think so too, but look, Amazing Jay having some fun smiling here in his first game on top talent here in China on EDG. Has played Garen last season in competitive, so don't don't write it off just yet, but it is going to be Rexai first pick for Clear Love. And you know he wants to debut something. Teleport, Ignite, Hecarim, outside just a few teams in the world, kind of left the scene. It's all about Teleport Smite now, so he needs to really debut something different as Cola flashes the game. Yeah, there's a Teemo hovering there as well. King going to get to a couple other picks. Malkai actually already locked in for Cola and Gragas would be a fine answer in the jungle for Huey. A lot of power coming through with the first two picks. Malkai very reliable. Cassiopeia is really tantalizing as a pick that's available. I'm sure Pawn plays it. Don't know much about Korn. I think he played it a couple of times. It wasn't really one of his core champions. He had real peaks of troughs, peaks and troughs of performance did Korn. Was really trying to push it a bit too far with champions like Lux that he really never managed to look convincing on. When he played the standard, his Ari in particular was very impressive. Yeah, Korn's got a really weird champion pool. It's sort of Ariana Ari, which are two different champions. LeBlanc sort of in the middle there as well. But I'm worried about Deft and uh, Mako getting Annie and Sivir in That's this game. true, but Sivir is going through. Fizz might actually be the selection. Is locked in there. And that could be Amazing Jay's fizz as well. He actually does have it in his last five picks. Mm. I, I don't know, but it's, it's too suspicious, right? Why do you pick fizz, blind pick early? We know Pawn loves, loves this champion. Plays so much fizz. Even when it doesn't fit the comp, he's like, I'm picking fizz, guys. It seems to be his way, but... It's suspicious to see it that early in the picks of that. It is indeed, and I, th I don't think we got a talent game from him last season, but we did get a couple of Fizz games, including one we that he hard We can't complain about too on. much. There was no Shaco, but everything else was around. That's true. There were some Vegas happening. We got some Dravens as well coming in for Crystal. All sorts of shenanigans here in the LPL as King. Going to select their next two picks. It is Nautilus Solution, probably for the bottom lane. Waiting to see what's left. It's, it's actually quite a big question. Mark. Amazing Joe's showing the teleport smite, so I guess we don't know whether to expect a top lane smite fizz, it's possible. It is. Yeah, a lot of questions and no real answers at this present point. They're flashing the Morgana, could be a Morgana mid for all we know. Annie is available. Be very surprised to see them not go for Sivir Oh Annie. my god. It's there. Varus gets locked in there. That's a champion for death from a long time ago. It's not a but champion It's for not death. a champion for death, exactly. No. That's Pawn's champion, I guess, is Morgana might be able to round things out. Gonna take a bit more time to breathe here. I wonder what Mako's gonna do. I assume he's gonna lock in this Morgana here. Wants a bit more protection for these double carries. But that's Avaris there as their last pick. I love the fact that, I mean, Morgana, even though she's super flexible at this point, I has to be going support, you'd imagine. Everyone else, kind of nebulous. It's gonna be Varus mid. Yep. Unicorns of Love, of course, famously played this in the uh, EU LCS finals. Very, very strong with the buffs towards the, uh, the, the, the arrow, the Q. Uh, sh much shorter cooldown because when you're channeling it, the cooldown reduction is already affecting at that point. This is actually something that Fake has been practicing in solo queue. I've been watching his stream on the Hide on Bush account, practicing it. Obviously, it's infecting the Korean champion pool. Varus mid can be very, very powerful and has a low item threshold to be relevant. A tier for a bit of mana sustain, getting some armor, pe armor penetration. The base values are so high on that Q that it can be very, very re relevant. And you see a very defensive choice. They're going to go with the Orianna to match the Varus in the mid, the Sivir in the <laughs> mid. It's going to be Varus, surely. Look at Deft and Pawn just having some fun there. I think probably have to stop swapping because they need to make sure they're locked in. But should be Varus mid at this point. Colin does last pick his Orianna. I like the cleanse there as well. But Amazing Jay keeps it in the top side with the Fizz. That's Teleport Smite Fish. 
And that was the second most likely thing. I guess Clear Love doesn't really feel like a Fizz jungle player, although his Nidalee was quite he decent, so who's to Lee say? Sin. Clear Love will not be questioned. Yeah, but the... Fizz literally doesn't farm the jungle very That's well. True. He really can only gank and then just be a bit sad when it comes to the jungle, especially now that the AP changes have come through and you can't really go for the same on-hit build with the same levels of power. But this is a crazy draw <laughs> from EDG. This is actually the same matchup that Zatai picked into and just it's put... Destroyed Malka. Now, usually you'd want Ignite, actually. Teleport Ignite would be more reliable, but obviously going to be picking up a jungle item as far as we can tell. Pawn in the mid lane. This is a champion <laughs> that could really see some play. Yep. It's very similar to AP Cogmore in the fact that those max range arrows are off the vision chart. You don't even see them coming unless you have a lane ward, so they're going to be super powerful. Very defensive supporters. Any available, but not selected by Malka. I think just needs to protect some of these squishy carries. There's lots of diving that's going to be coming in. I actually love that the Siva complements the Varus as well. EDG, it looks strange, but it's really smart drafting. And honestly, Clear Love needs to go full Clear Love. We coined the Clear Love as going Cinderhog and buying lots of health. He's the only one who can do well, it. Well, we'll see if they can do it, because Varus is in the house. Let's get into game number one. And a welcome back to a pause, unfortunately, for our final series here. But a beautiful thing to freeze frame on there. Pawn playing Heartseeker Varus in the mid lane for EDG's first game. You challenged Amazing J to mix it up in the top lane. We wondered if EDG might be up to some shenanigans. And Papa Smithy, your prayers have been answered. If there's one thing you can say about Amazing J, it's expect shenanigans. Yes. He I mean, is the shenanigan man. Whether it was the teleport ignite that we thought, okay, I don't understand this no flash, no ghost Hecarim. He made it work. It revolutionized Hecarim play around the world. Moved on to a new meta. Smite's what it's all about. I assume it's still going to be Cinder Hulk coming through from Amazing J, but there's no guarantee. No, and there's Pawn looking very majestic there in the mid lane. Very pretty there with his little angel wings. And there's a crystalline flask because, of course, it's Pawn. He always starts flask. And look, Doran Blade is a decent choice, but the mana sustain is the big issue. It's a very high base mana cost coming onto your Q. And it's on such a low cooldown as the Chroma, again, looking very majestic is Amazing J. It's Pokerino Oh, time. good binding there. Pawn as well coming through. Al not paying attention. Gets over the wall with the E. No one follows in with a flash, but Lucian chunked out early. And Al actually not having to skill, only having to skill E, not even having to flash. That's the minimum you'd expect you in this situation. Depth looking. Mako almost gets the binding, but a good block there by Sync Dream means that Lucian does get back safety, but that was very scary. <laughs> wow. I, but I mean, the fact that he didn't even have to flash or heal showed... On the one side, uh, the fact you know the the option of uh, skilling the relentless pursuit was very adept. Good thing he didn't skill that Q for a bit of power early. But more importantly, just a bit of confidence to understand the situation, know the limits, know how much damage all the abilities being thrown at you do, and not panic flash heal. Yeah, EDG not committing either. No summoners used anywhere actually after that. Just a couple of. Uh, level 1 spells exchanged, so Korn will settle into the mid lane. Down the bottom, it seems like we will have standard lanes, and Amazing J currently doing the wolf camp for himself as well. Amazing J, he always pushes the envelope. Very intrigued to see what is the jungle choice. You have to imagine Sindog. It's hard to pick up, hard to pass up, but then are we going to expect a full tank? Fizz, is he still going to go the on-hit build, despite the fact that the W changes were about trying to eradicate that playstyle? Lots of questions. Magus is not a bad enchant to pick up at all. Very gold efficient. But we'll have to wait and see. We will indeed. No a no AP runes, I can tell you, at least on the Fizz. So might be looking for more of that bruiser style. Pawn in the mid side. Just going to approach Korn here. And again, this matchup, I mean, Varus in general, always been a strong laner in the bottom side. That does hold true in mid as well. And the irony is that it's not till level 9 that Orianna has instant mid wave clear. By then, if you channel up your arrow, it actually does quite a lot of wave clearing himself. The damage in bottom. Oh, death. Very smart stuff. Oh. One last auto gets the kill. And EDG's duo have seen it time and time again. They are so aggressive. Yeah, he moves on to Morgana, but same sort of play style. Ping level to instant all in. The bindings hit razor sharp. And Sync Dream, there's nothing you can do. I don't think Mako's missed a binding so far. And Mako and Depth starting out in the foot that they just left off on after MSI. They don't 2v2 that often, but when they do, this is what happens. Absolutely. Now, Pawn has wave control in mid. You mentioned it right towards the tail end of the pick ban. Fizz is a very strong laning matchup against the Maokai. A lot of kill pressure coming through. Whatever the build you go through, just get some points into that W. And the trades Maokai just can't deal with. 
You're winning bottom lane. You got pressure in mid. You got a strong ganking jungler. Feels like an EDG game. It does indeed. And Clear Love happily farming while his lanes do some winning for him. So he's going to be happy. He doesn't need to get too aggressive with the ganks. And I have to say, for a lot of early ganking that Clear Love did last season at the start of it, he's really toned down because he just has so much faith in his laners. And the meta changed as well. He was playing champions like Lee Sin on patch 5.4 and just had to be really assertive. But he just doesn't have to do that anymore. The Cinder Hulk meta changes thing a bit. It's still more proactive than kind of the, the clear love we talk about with more negative turns when it comes to being really passive and just not impacting the lanes, being invisible but not playing Evelyn, if you know what I mean. He's, he's been a lot better than that. And you can see some aggression coming out into Huey. Looked to contest for the Scuttlecrab, but too late. Yeah, couldn't get it, but did smite, actually. That has a Stalker's Blade done already, so able to get some good damage down, but no kill forthcoming there over onto Huey, so we'll keep his double buffs just for now as Sync Dream. Trying to get a couple wards down here and there as Pawn. Actually trying to zone Oriana, but uh, Korn doing a great job so far keeping competitive in CS. In 575 range. Oriana doesn't have that many pushing options, doesn't have the short cooldowns on command attack to really go through multiple ref rotations. Ow is level two and really needs help. Yeah, we can see Deft was not a lane bully early on in his career, but has evolved in China to really become both a dominant team fighter and a dominant laner. And this is the matchup you can see. I think Mako helps a lot there, but Deft, when he smells blood, he just keeps you trapped forever. Yeah, I don't want to really focus too much on the support. Deft's definitely picked up, but Mako, man, what a improvement he has been over Mouse at the start of last season. It was ever since they lost that match against Snake 2-0 with Mouse, they changed the support. We didn't know anything about Mako, a pure rookie. But the amount of a controlled aggression that Mako brings out, brings out the best in Death. Yeah, doesn't need his Annie right now, and Death going to continue harassing under turret, clearing out minion waves as best he can. It's 39 to 19 in the bottom side, so 20 CS ahead already. And just looking to pick up the freeze once again. No, no, just happy to push. They had the freeze option. There was multiple levels advantage coming through from Siva. But Siva happy to just wave clear to increase the pressure. Opens up a lot of space for Clear Love to do work, but Clear Love doing what he does best. Passively fun. I mean, the nice thing is that Clearlove can go and take jungle from Huey now because every one of his lanes is pushed up as well. So first game going to come down to the bottom side. Huey will visit to get some pressure down, but the ward will spot them off and EDG will put their vision back down. Six minutes in, we've already had a kill and look, a thousand gold up already. It's a massive lead. The 400 gold from the first spot, but 600 just from the farming in the bottom lane especially. It's King doing everything they can to relieve pressure off this ward and the jungler has to show Clear Love's in the area. Yeah, Maker wants to use that Black Shield. Does nail the Binding Lord to Sync Dream. Clear Love comes in. Prey Seeker does land. Not quite enough damage as Death is chasing him, but they'll get the Pink Ward instead. And Nautilus going to be forced out of the lane once more. Just so much more pressure coming out from Deft with the Pickaxe. So it's Pickaxe against just a Doran Blade, which is a massive advantage. And Clear Love, he can counter jungle. He can passively farm. Varus is even just straight up winning this mid lane matchup. Everything going well for EDG. Yeah, Skirmisher's Saber just completed for Amazing J as well. So he's got that first part of his jungle item with the Ruby Crystal. Have to imagine it is a Cinder Hulk coming through. So I think at least going to be the start of maybe Bruiser Fizz here. Bruiser Fizz was target nerfed, but it's still just fine. The big difference, the big change they did is on the Sea Stone Trident W, the original change to kind of nerf AP Fizz was to move the on hit damage to the passive and the percent health damage to the active. So what that caused was that without having to use the spell, i.e. permanently, you could do that on hit, max W build, and get lots of good trade damage in with auto. So you prioritize attack speed and other, uh, I mean, Triforce and other auto attack based builds. Whereas now, moving the percentage health damage to the W incentivizes just poking because the percent health damage doesn't require attack speed to be relevant. It took away the AD build. Huey's coming in. The depth coming in, good spell shield and black shield there coming through. Actually, even Malka here trying to get a gank. Walk down to lane. Didn't even teleport because, ow, he's in the top side farming. Would rather 1v1 the skirmisher Saber Fizz than stick in this lane any longer. Very interesting to see. And there's a lot of kill pressure that's going to come through from Amazing J, even though he doesn't hasn't built any attack damage items or doesn't have any ability power. He's been... I don't think he's been sinned, so... He's lying and lining up his prey. He's only level 4. Yes, Amazing J's level 7 does have the ulti. Ow, now level 5, but... That might not be enough here at this stage. Lucian has to be careful sticking the creep wave. And Amazing Jay 
buys enough time but decides he's not worth the Brush King and just goes back to farming. And just to complete the thought on the change to Bruiser Fizz, with the changes, now because you don't have permanent on-hit damage, now that on-hit damage is only during the, I believe, five-second uptime on the Sea Stone Trident, you just get less of that on-hit damage in, therefore you do less trade damage. It really promotes the burst playstyle with AP rather than the AD, but it doesn't completely trivialize Bruiser Fizz. No, I mean, Fizz is just so sticky and so annoying that you can just get on a carry and make their life miserable, especially with Skirmisher's Saber acting as almost a mini exhaust pawn. Looking good there as well. Pickaxe actually with a tear, so I believe that's Mana Mune coming through. It will definitely be Mana Mune. It's the standard build is Mana Mune into armor penetration. You don't really need more AD on top of that. Of course, you'll build it just to amplify your poke damage. It's just that the cooldowns just get so obnoxious. Maybe Black Cleaver will be the build as a consideration. Although, again, you're more about long range pokes. So when you're going for poke, you want more the flat penetration than the stacking penetration. But it's an option because CDR, armor penetration, that's what you're all about as mid lane Varus. Mm, Pawn looking good right now. Decent CS lead, but Colin will catch up. As you can see, the oh. poke just missing there for Pawn. Yeah, not a very wide skill shot. So you definitely have to be on point. But with how short the cooldown is with the cooldown refresh mechanic, Plenty of Q's gonna yeah, come you out. You can see even Sync Dream could be in trouble. Hook oh. does land though. Good shockwave there for Con. Barriers down as well. Clear Love's gonna join the party. Teleports in as well. Clear Love now gonna have to back away. Great ulti oh. there by Huey. Gonna move him back in. And Clear Love still alive. Gets a knock up there. Black Shield for Mako as well. Will keep him alive for just a bit longer. Flash Auto is gonna give Con the kill though. And Clear Love finally caught out of position. And crucially, double buffs as far as I can tell. Red buff was riding to complement the blue buff that Corner already picked up. Maybe a re-engage. Mako is level 6 but doesn't want to pull the trigger on the ulti just yet. No one quite low enough there to go in and the target they caught uh, too tanky, unfortunately. So no extra kills or rotation, maybe for a turret, but Poke going to come through for Pawn as well. Decent siege actually here from EDG. I mean, look, it's 280 carries effectively at this point, although Pawn won't be really in traditional, so that standing damage won't be as strong. The wave clear and the turret damage is very high. Yeah, looking good there. As they're going to mow down the minding waves here. Deft actually doesn't even have the turret in bottom lane. Would just rather pick up the mid lane turret right now for his team. So a smart rotation after a bit of a scuffle. Clear love die, but they get the mid turret. And look, Control Mage is not having a turret to go back to. Makes them very, very gankable. Clear love can have his tail between his legs a little bit, having died and given away the kill. Is still going to have many, many angles to burrow in as Rek'Sai to look for the kill in mid between the knock-up on the unburrow and the chain of corruption coming through from Pawn. There's a lot of kill pressure onto this Orion. You see Lucian still up here as well, but Amazing J still ahead by two levels here. So Lucian does have to respect the all-in potential from the Fizz. We've got a pickaxe and a BF sword with the Avarice Blade there for Def. So everyone going for this quick Avarice Blade on their Sivir, it seems like. Manamino longsword done there for Pawn. And other than that, Cinderhawk now completed for Clear Love. It's a snowball choice going for the Avarice Blade when you're already winning. Either you, when you buy an early-ish Avarice Blade, you're either buying it because you've given up on lane, you want to pick up as much gold as possible passively, or you're winning by so much that you can get everything, basically. It's the old GP10 effect, and it works great. Uh, I mean, I think with Sivra especially, given that she just wants to hoover up minion waves for quite a while, it does add up quite nicely. So I like the pick up here. I've seen Crystal and all the other Sivra players today and yesterday do it, so makes sense here. And we can see a dragon actually snuck completely away by Clear Love. So quick, the camera couldn't catch it. There's just no pressure whatsoever on the bottom side. The top lane has already moved. Mako's going for the kill, because of course no one else on this side of the map for King. Flash not enough. The Clear Love coming through. Teleport's down there as well. Knockup does come in. Death's already here, and that's a clean kill Mako. Lovely initiation. Don't really think they needed the teleport, you'd have to think. Amazing J leaves top. I guess he was just uh, relegated to the fact that he was probably going to have to watch the turret go down and bot. They're going to at minimum get this turret in mid, and they just keep pushing across the map. And you can see we've got Cinderhawk completed now for Amazing J, so does opt for that jungle life. And Amplifying Tome probably indicates a Sheen to me, so maybe going for a Trinity Force somewhere along the way, but remains to be seen what Fizz does want to do from the top lane. That Cleaver doesn't make much sense on Fizz, given they doesn't do very much physical damage outside of just sheer auto attacks, so Trinity Force is probably what you're priced into. Honestly, the best thing I can say about the Fizz choice in this situation is it's going to fulfill a similar result to the Trundle versus Maokai matchup in that it makes Maokai very honest in a 1v1 split pushing sense, but definitely not an ideal pick. A bit of out of the box thinking. Amazing J style through and through. It is. I mean, it's his first game of the season on his new team. He's coming in for the first game on the starting roster. 
better mix it up on Amazing Day because that's what that's what you and the fans and probably your team want. The fan support will definitely be there for Amazing Jay. He doesn't play boring champions like Nara or anything meta. Garen and Fizz. He does Fizz play Nara actually, day. but also Garen and Fizz. That's what makes him special. As Huey does, Edo binding there from Morgana. Mako on the point with these skill shots here from this champion. But other than that, it's been pretty quiet so far. Def just going to re-rotate here and try and take more structures. I actually like the fact that he's moved away from the Anis. Speaking of damage, my goodness. Oh, that is damage there onto both of them actually as Al gets the culling down Def. Again, just face tanks a chunk of it there. So a bit too aggressive perhaps, but clearly rotating in as well means they really want to take these turrets. Showing them Morgana makes sense for comp. As you mentioned, they have Varus, Siva, who both are very, very squishy backliners. But honestly, in general, the Annie's being nerfed next patch. Okay, attack range is not going to change her main function in skirmishes, but will change her laning phase. Just keep practicing these other champions. It's move on to your repertoire. There was never any doubt that Mako could play Morgana, but Annie only or any priority might not be the way after the change to attack range. Be interesting to see what happens here as Def keeps cleaning up Minion Lift. Infinity Edge has been completed now as well, so very strong in this particular lane. And you can see King are bringing up Huey constantly to the top side of the map as well, just trying to defend what at this point looks like an inevitable 3v3, possibly even a Clear Love special turret dive. That's very, very tanky already. Doesn't have the giant spell to his name. No early war mogs like MLXG in the previous game, but still very, very strong and able to just disregard the jungle control of Huey. Usually we're talking about Gargs being able to out-pressure or match a Rex site. Definitely not the case this game. No, not at all. As Point continues to farm up there, 128 to 121. Lots of farm there for those mid laners. Clear love. Going to take away the Raptors now as well, so sort of a similar look. And that gold lead stacking up quite quickly already. 4,500 gold for EDG. Maybe make it 5,500 there as they get a turret gold down as well. And that's the three outers already done. Looking an awful lot like some old Corky games. The fast push meta without Corky, I was going to say myself, is super surprising to see, especially when it's not like they went very obnoxious win lane, win game champion. Sure, Fizz is favorable against Maokai, but definitely doesn't have pushing choices in that lane. It usually just evolves with item pickups that he has kill pressure. Varus versus Orianna. Orianna should be able to match a little bit better than the matchup went, but it went about as expected. It's just EDG. Just throwing pedal to the metal, going really, really aggressive. Three outer turrets at 15 minutes is a great clip, and they're not going to stop here. No, that dragon actually going to be coming up in a couple minutes as well. EDG already have the first, going to look to snowball and get the second. And we've seen this from them all spring split. Get ahead, start to snowball the objectives, take out the turrets, and just take over the map. Yeah, flat armor penetration picked up with the brutalizer. Patch 5.8, so I believe, yeah, Black Cleave, of course, has been changed. So only Yoma's Ghost Blade, probably not even going to be evolved at any point. Just going to stick with the Brutalizer. CDR Boots, maybe a Bloodthirster if he's feeling threatened, and then just straight into the last one. love coming in. Mako actually good ulti onto Cola. Tether does stay. Stun comes in. Def with the damage, and Maokai does get filled for Def's third kill of the game. And no one is tanky to three members at 16 minutes into the game. So easy to dive even onto the usually super tank Maokai. They're going to keep pushing. Sync Dream and Ow are able to pick up the turret and bot. Going to get the turret, but Ow might be in trouble. Fish does nice land. Fish. Amazing J. Very nice skill shot there. Skirmish just Saber down as well. Culling fade away there, but Amazing J kills him with the dot damage, maxing that W, and gets a double kill. 1v2. 1v2 action by the debuting Amazing J. No stranger to the LPL, but it's probably a stranger to double kills on Fizz 1v2. Looking good there. The Sheen. Doing a lot of work there, Skirmisher Saber with the challenging smite, also hurting Al, who's just been caught so far behind this game. Just look down at the CS as Pawn almost takes away a mid turret for himself as well. Pawn, by the way, usually roaming with his team, just happily farming in the mid so far, has not left. And look, there's been no chance, there's been no time in the last few months where you haven't been excited to be an EDG fan. Suddenly seeing an impressive performance on a new pick like Amazing J on Fizz. More reasons to get excited for it. EDG, because if they can be strategic about how they play their two top tier top laners, which Amazing J still has to prove to some degree, but it has always had the potential to evolve into a very strong top laner, more flexibility for a team that's already excelled on the world stage is an exciting place to it be. It is indeed, and I think growing that team into a squad is the important thing for EDG. We saw some of their subs, we saw you play. Things are a bit different now, so solidifying that roster, giving them more options, and honestly just giving your players potentially time for breaks, especially if Pawn maybe gets hopefully doesn't get injured again. There's some skill shots coming through, but Def to Mako, sit on top of a wall, they'll clear it out, because Dragon, it's back alive. Dragon's alive. I just don't know how you can fight for it if you're king. You're six and a half thousand plus gold behind. Amazing J, not group, but has a teleport available. 
There's the Rek'Sai, so the first globals used, and we're just waiting to see if they have enough pressure to actually force Fizz into using his teleport. And great timing here as well. Pawn actually got blue buff as Korn. Takes a big chunk of damage. Sync Dream looks for a hook, doesn't find it. Eats an arrow instead, and Pawn, he is just chugging these arrows out. Yeah, but the cooldown's so, so low. It doesn't have a lot of mana, though. Only the mana regen, waiting for the Chain of Corruption. Amazing J coming in. Dragon is going to go over to someone. No, they just fight instead. Nautilus goes down to Amazing J as he dives in. Ow! Gets wrecked by Fizz, and Amazing J gets a double. Huey nowhere near to secure the dragon. Clear love, no death. Just goes over and auto attacks it instead. And EDG is still team fighting well. That's going to be four kills as Con gets caught. Clans does not work, unfortunately. There is going to be safe for a bit longer. Clear love looks for the prey sick and misses, but does get the kill. I just don't understand why King were looking to fight in that particular objective. Maybe send one or two members to try to go for a very, very Oh, tears the Optimistic air. steal. And speaking of optimism, yep. Huey's dead. Late ace here. Does get smite as well. Amazing Jay going to get his third kill of the exchange. Is that dot damage? Doesn't even dive in. It's just so much work. When they announced Amazing Jay on the roster, you saw the reason for it. It's a bit more flexibility. I think the first reaction had to be a bit of, you know, a bit of puzzlement. Koro's very, very good. And Amazing Jay's team was bad. But he always had those flashes of brilliance. And it's often been the case that players can step up from teams that aren't performing well and just play with so much more confidence and ability when they can really take the shackles off on a top team like EDG. And Amazing Jay's fitting in just fine. He is, and as I said, the thing that he does bring over Koro is more of that carry potential. Koro can play Kassan and he can play Hecarim, but he's mostly on Maokai Nas, sometimes Rumble Duty, very utility, team fight focused. Amazing Jay brings the top Fizz, plays the Garen. He's more of a carry style player. He was that on Energy Pacemaker last season and maybe here again on EDG. I won't quite go to your extincts. I believe Ko is a very strong carry player. The thing that Amazing J brings, you're, you're scouting against EDG. You know all about the now. You know all about the top picks. You ban out Koro. You get him in a bad position. Somehow, miraculously, you get that win over EDG. EDG throw in Amazing J. There is no playbook that tells you what Amazing J is going to play. I'm not even convinced Amazing J knows what Amazing J is going to play. That guy can play off meta picks. That guy can innovate with the likes of Teleport Ignite. And having that wild card on your team makes your squad that much stronger. It does. As Mako does hit a shockwave. Nautilus Hold as well. Death going to try and save him. Varus Hold does miss there. But Clear Love diving straight in. Colin goes in and chunks out Death. But Clear Love still going. Amazing J just diving into the backlines now as well. Vicious Sync Dream. Good hook to keep. Keep him safe, but one kill down already. Clear love chasing out. Gonna just dive into the turret and try and take him out. Amazing J gonna go in instead. Gets the double, then the triple. And this fish is doing business. 8 and 0 legendary on his first outing is Amazing J. Man. EDG still pretty good. Still really good here. 10,000 gold, maybe 12,000 gold at this point ahead already. Going to go in for a Baron. It's an early one. I would normally call it an EDG Baron, but it, when you're this far ahead, it's just a standard Baron. Absolutely. They're just so far ahead. they got no health, but it doesn't matter. Death's going to have to do a bit of tanking. Pawn reluctantly might have to as well, but it's going to be a free Baron. King aren't even in the same area code as EDG as a team or for this Baron, and it's an easy one for EDG. Yeah, and King struggling here with a couple of substitutes moving through now as well. Not a whole lot left in the tank, unfortunately, for them. And EDG, known for closing out games with ruthless efficiency. We saw in the last series, took both M3 and RNG maybe a little longer than we expected to close out games once they were ahead. But EDG, they are not a team to let go of a league. Once they have it, they run straight to the finish line with it as Pawn. Nope. Doesn't quite steal away the red buff, but a good try. Yeah, made very optimistic, but a good try. Very high base damage on that. So Amazing J finds yeah, another finds kill. Yeah, finds Sync Dream. That's his ninth kill of the game. Going to go back in here, potentially diving in. Shockwave does clip him there. Amazing J needs playable tricks to back. Does use it, but it's not enough as Death diving back in with the help of the Baron buff. Mako coming in as well. Clear love trying to avenge his new teammate. Black Shield keeps Death safe. Flashes forward. Spell Shield goes in onto our 1v3. Is going to die, but Mako will lock in. Gets the ulti. There's the two kills actually. Actually coming through, Corn gonna get chased down now as well. Needs to dodge a skill shot, but will do. No, not quite. Clear Love is gonna tunnel in. Good cleanse there from Corn as Clear Love now caught well and truly out of position. Has to walk out of the base, and it's a two for two, but doesn't really matter. Yeah, EG are just having fun. 16 to three is your kill score. Pawn's able to bring up the minion line. He's a ranged auto attacker, not quite an AD carry per se. Definitely an AD caster with the build I predicted. This is basically standard Power of Evil style Varus. 
Faker's trying it, Pawn's breaking it out. There's no reason it won't come into the meta page turn, because although it doesn't always have the strongest laning, especially in the early levels, the fact that you can do five, 600 damage out of vision unpredictably is always going to make a champion viable. It's why AP Cogmore always comes in and out of the meta depending on the champion pool and how many assassins have his name tattooed on their forehead. And Varus is just a new one to add to the pool. Yeah, great to see here. Unfortunately, the bad news here for Pawns Varus is we haven't really got to see it in action. It's been all about Def's early aggression with Mako, Clear Love being Clear Love, and Amazing Jay's debut on EDG at 9 1 and 1. We'll be sad to have the death, but. What a breakout performance here on his new team. Absolutely. I guess it's surprising to some degree just because of his previous team's fortunes, but we always saw the flashes of brilliance, and if they can start to uh, cement into more extended periods of brilliance and, again, help the squad, because you have to think Coral will still be the lead top laner for this team. It's just another thing. Adding squad League of Legends to what was already a winning five is impressive. Yeah, Mako goes down there to Cole. A bit of a missing edge by EDG. Pawn, good ulti there onto Huey lands in, and that's going to be another kill. Cola going to go down. That's two, actually, now, as it's two for one. Amazing Jay diving in once out. Going <laughs> to try and find him just missing, I believe, with the Urchin Strike getting out of range. Double kill, though, for Siva. Corn, maybe going to get dove as well. Pawn doing massive damage. Amazing Jay dives into the back line with the playful trickster. That's four kills for two. The jungler and support there, but EDG just keep the train rolling. It's double 80 carries, the turrets will fall very, very quickly. 24 minutes into the game. It's actually surprising that the fact that the death timers are quite as long as they are, but it's going to be at minimum an inhibitor turret for EDG. I think the death timers have more to do with just how many kills they're getting consecutively. Inhibitors not fall, but the bottom lane inhibitor turret will go with it. Dragon is back alive. If that's something EDG decide they also need in this game, but you look down the inventories on the left and there are so many items in them. And that's just a reality. It's staggered death Death time has been the, was the reason why we see some of them looking a bit longer. The fights are just going, they don't, they're not fights, let's be real. It's just skirmishes happening between very, very powerful 2,000 gold on average ahead. I mean, 16,500 gold is the lead. It's just disgusting. It is disgusting. And EDG picking on where they left off at the start of the season here. Maybe with some new picks, a new player in there as well, but still looking just about the same sort of team. All class, all hype, and well deserved after their victory at MSI. Looking good in their first game of the LPL, or their new LPL season. And I can only speculate from a King perspective, maybe it's a visa issue, because of course the two Korean players very notable aren't in. Uh, from what I understand, this roster and these whole changes by the Royal Organization came quite late into the picture, so maybe they're just not ready to go at this point. But look, EDG's maybe not the best asset test for a team first up. I mentioned it before. Like, they were always going to get outclassed whatever lineup they fielded, I would speculate. There's going to need to be more time to cement. It'll be interesting to see if this is the same roster for King two weeks from now. Yeah, well, indeed. Maybe even the next game, depending on who is available to play. But right now, it is all EDG all the time. Deft is on some sort of solo mission down in the bottom side because he doesn't have too much to worry about with plenty of good wards. Amazing Day has a Blade of the Ruin King because, sure, why not? He's a Jax player. He wants to go it's, to the Jax it's, it's the old Trinity Force uh, into Blade of the Crew can build. That part's very standard about top lane fizz. The Smite, that's new. The fact that it's still being played after the changes, that's new as well. But it's still very, very effective. Yeah, making it work here. 11, 1, and 1. That and Hib looking to fall down here. Def aggressively forward. Point even going to come in. In fact, he's not even auto-attacking. He's busy trying to poke people with his Q. With a short cooldown with CDR boots, there's no real need to auto-attack. Def will do all the heavy lifting on that one. And it's just arrow after arrow. Yeah, Pong going to fire them in here. One hell of a siege going to be set up now by EDG. And they might even just dive in. Binding almost hits their big poke there into Pong. They are going to try and fight Will King, but Huey far too low already as Dev gets himself his sixth kill the game. Amazing Day tries to launch a fish at Al, but he does escape it. But they're going to tank up the turret. Shockwave is available, but too hard to try and get a kill here. Everyone scattered out nicely, and that's another inhibitor down. Chuckwave's a complete non-factor. There's no second AP item when the damage really starts going, or the utility caught between a Luden's Echo and just a Death Cap with those two purchases, the Blasting one and the Aether, where King are just watching, King are watching the clock, and there's nothing they can do. They're dragging up in a minute 10. Flash forward there by Con Signals. The end of the game is King. I think a timely surrender there at the stage of the game. It wasn't quite over, but Apart from the formality, it was effectively over. Extra time, the game was over at eight to nine minutes. EDG completely walked all over this King lineup. The newly formed King lineup, not the lineup we expected, not quite Star on World Cup as we'd intimated. I think it'll get there eventually. I can only speculate as to why Insect 
is not playing, why Zero is not playing. I guess it makes sense if Insect and Zero are not available, why Field Nama? You might as well go for a complete bottom lane matchup that have been practicing in scrims, solo queue on the sister team as far as I know. Nami will come back into the team. Those stars will get there. But for now, King dismantled by EDG. And EDG, I don't even know if that was a dismantling. That was just brute force in all the lanes. Def showing the same aggression he had last season. Amazing Jay going off on a Fizz and Pawn. Having some fun on the Varus. EDG looking in form from MSI. But don't go too far away. When we return our last game and some more shenanigans will return.